Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday from our knees. Happy birthday to you. This is uh, Alan Karpik with Jerry Seasting celebrating a birthday. We can disclose the number. You can look it up if you can find it on the internet. But it's all birthdays are good. And Jerry Seasting, a legend, a Boilermaker legend in the backcourt, a uh, longtime NBA player and, and, and been involved in the NBA for years, now in Bonita Springs, Florida. Jerry, first of all, this is a highlight. I know the Arnie's birthday Zoom, but uh, happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I've survived another year, so it's, uh, <laughs> they're all they're all good at this point. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, you know, you, I always ask the question about birthday traditions, whether it be growing up in uh, in Martinsville or things that you do with your family now. Is there anything that goes on in the Seasting household? Or do your kids uh, treat you in a particular way on your birthday? How does that? Uh, how, what do you? What what's on the tap for you today? Yeah, well, I'm going to play golf today, which I do a lot of days anyway. But yeah. um, after I leave this meeting, I'll probably be heading over uh, to the to the course. But uh, I really don't have any real specific things that are, you know, annually that that we do. Um, it's always fun. My birthday is always falling around uh, Thanksgiving. Um, once every six or seven years, it's like the day after or whatever, yeah. but it never did fall on Thanksgiving, but sometimes over uh, the Thanksgiving weekend. So, you know, traditionally it's been, you know, like in high school, right when the basketball season was starting in high school and stuff. So, you know, you're kind of juiced up anyway. So, you know, back in those days, birthdays were, were a little bit more fun than they are now anyway. Yeah, but you know, you're going to be at the, you're, you're not quite at the age to shoot your age just yet. Well, maybe you will. If you do, you're going to have the round of your life. But uh, yeah, I'm getting closer. <laughs> I'm getting closer all the time. That's for sure. <laughs> what, what, what's your handicap, so to speak? Where where are you as a golfer? Um, my handicap has been between six and seven most oh. of the year this year. So I'm I'm playing pretty well, better, better than I ever have, to tell you the truth. And, you know, with the golf equipment and clubs and balls as good as they are now, uh, you know, you hit it almost as far as you did 20 years ago, really, sometimes. So it's fun. You know, if if it's like anything else in sports, I was telling somebody the other day I had a good round. I said, it's like everything. I said, the more you the more you do it, the better you get. And yeah. I mean, even if it, at that age, you know, at my age, I'm still uh, I'm still playing fairly well. And, and so it makes it fun. But it's fun to get out there, uh, you know, and get some exercise and and have some fun anyway, even if you have a bad round. <laughs> Well, Jerry is a Hall of Fame level uh, player at Purdue. Obviously, for those of you that don't know, and you, you don't shame on you, but played with, uh, played under Fred Schaus and Lee Rose uh, from 1976 to 79. Those seasons, uh, interesting experience. And I, I wanted to ask you about that because you had you, you certainly Lee Rose, uh, uh, who just passed away this year, who had a huge impact on you as a player. So did so did obviously playing with Walter Jordan, Wayne Walls, and Eugene Parker uh, in your first three years, and Coach Fred Schaus. Talk about that, just in terms of that takeaway. Now, as you look back at it, uh, what what uh, what was your Purdue basketball experience like? Well, it, it, for the most part, it, it was great. I mean, we had a lot of lot of great guys, good players. Um, you know, there was a year that we probably underachieved my junior year. I think yeah. even the, the seniors that year, you know, we wish we could have had that back. It just didn't, it just didn't gel the way it was supposed to. But um, overall, it, it was great, you know, playing for Purdue and, and uh, playing in Mackey Arena with, um, you know, the fans there. I mean, it's it's always been one of the best venues in college basketball. And the way they fixed up the arena now and, uh, you know, all the bells and whistles that go along with it, we didn't have that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous place to play basketball. Um, it's got a great tradition and, um, you know, they're, they're carrying it on right now this year. That's for sure. Oh, no doubt. We're going to get into that. It's like Lee Rose was, a, was a, obviously a, one of the great tacticians and had it. And you maybe paralleled him a little bit uh, in your NBA playing days and coaching days, et cetera. And, and with being around Lee, just talk about him and his impact on you, not only from a playing standpoint, your senior year, of course, you win the big share of the Big Ten championship and play with Joe Barry Carroll and Brian Walker and Keith Edmondson and others. But talk talk about his impact on you in terms of your basketball uh, IQ. 
Yeah, he, he was uh, he was a perfect coach uh, for us at that time. Um, he came in, he, he had a whole different culture, a whole different way of practicing, a whole way of approaching every day on uh, what we had to do. And he was a taskmaster at the same yeah. time. I mean, he was he was innovative, you know, and forward thinking, but he was very much a uh, disciplinarian. Um, our practices were you know, you, you were at some of the practices, yeah. the time would be on the clock for each drill. And then you would go on to the next drill. And we practice, you know, I don't think we had rules back in those yeah. days, uh, how long you could practice. So we, we went three hours every day, uh, yeah. up and, you know, well into February, almost till the end of the season, we, we practiced long and hard, and we were in great shape. I mean, he, he always said so many of the games are going to come down to the last two minutes. So conditioning is going to be the decision exciting factor in a, in a lot of games and you know it, it was just um you know a lot of fun you know the guys kind of reminds me of last year and this year's team with Purdue yeah. my junior and senior year yeah it, it was is like a whole new attitude and a, and the ball was shared better um there, there seemed to be you know a more um idea of what you were trying to get every single possession down the floor you know we had joe barry carroll so early on in the season uh he's he's in the locker room before practice and he says you know there's not a lot of teams that have a seven foot all-american so he's going to touch the ball every time down the floor and so you know he he laid down uh how how exactly we were going to play and uh you know we had a, a pretty smart group of guys and we understood you know each and every uh game each and every practice really what what he wanted from us and um you know it was it was a great year it really was yeah, it's interesting. I didn't even thought about the parallels between the 79 team and this year's team, just because yourself and Brian Walker, uh, you know, guys that knew how to play and knew exactly what to do. And it, of course, the the old turnout or whatever, what I think it was what it was called under under Coach yeah. D. Rose and the plan to Joe Barry's touching the ball every every time down the court. Matt Painter has talked about openly about Zach Eady needs to touch the ball dang near every time and Purdue's doing a great job with that. Uh, talk about that in terms of what you're seeing, you know, just in terms of that Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer, uh, really talented guys, even at their very young age, but they're doing what they have to do to win. Right. Well, to go back first, um, you know, Coach Rose told Brian Walker and I he did not want to play two small guards. No, at that's the same right. time. And so, um, you know, he looked at me and he said, uh, and I, I want to play this guy that he, I think he's a good point guard. And I said, I'll play wherever, you know? Yeah. So later on, you know, Brian, and I, when we saw, when we'd see him, especially if we saw him together, which wasn't that often, but we would, we would tease him, you know, <laughs> you know, how to, how to work out with the two small guards <laughs> and stuff. So, you know, he had in his mind, um, what kind of player he wanted at each position. Um, you know, if he had a fantasy team, what kind of, you know, and he wanted a six, five, six, six off guard, yeah. which I ended up being, you know, I didn't play six, five or six, six, <laughs> but it worked. And, you know, there is parallels to that with this team too. I mean, last year, um, Faust, uh, first didn't play first didn't play that much with Edie, you know, at the start of the season, he did, then I think he got sick a little bit yeah. and then it, he never was in the rotation. Like, and now this year they're actually playing on the floor together some, so he's doing Matt's doing some different rotations and it's working. And then of course the two guards, um, you know, the, the big difference that I really see besides just almost everybody's improved that was there last year is that we've got some guys that can make plays. They can put the ball on the floor. The timing on when they pass and set up the shooters is darn near perfect. A lot of times they play with their head up and they move the ball. Uh, we haven't had that for a couple of years. So, you know, Lawyer and Smith, um, just their natural ability to make plays and to put, you know, lawyers, a tremendous shooter. He's the best shooter we've had for a long, long time. Um, you know, maybe even back to Mount when you, if yeah. you want to go that far, but he, he's going to be a tremendous player there. Smith's going to be a tremendous player there. And then you've got M M first is going to be a good player. I think he's got a chance to be a pro player someday. Yeah. I really do. Uh, he, he, he's going to get his confidence. You could see it building almost every game last week. Uh, played better and better, and he got more time and more time. And um, and then at the defensive end, I, I thought, in my personal opinion, watching Purdue a lot last year, I thought we lost a little bit of our toughness 
and our physicality last year, which that that shouldn't have happened. And and it started, I think it started a little bit in the backcourt. But each, each guy this year, I mean, they're they're not maybe great individually defensive players, but they all play hard at the defensive end, and they all get down the stance, and they all help each other, and. They didn't get out physical by any of those teams last week. In fact, it was the other way around. So, you know, they, they've shown already, and it's only November. We got to we gotta keep that in mind. But they've shown already they can play with everybody. So, and I don't think too many Purdue fans, I know I didn't expect that this fast this year. You know, I thought I thought it'd be a real interesting year, be a great rebounding year, um, you know, a rebuilding year in some respects and set us up to be really good next year and the year after. But... Hey, um, you know, you got to take advantage of a player like Edie while he's here. And so these guys, um, they're, they, they were really fun to watch last week. That's for sure. You know, you talk, and you're obviously with a wealth of experience, not only as a player, but a coach in the, in the NBA. And, uh, and you know it when you see it. Yeah, to, to me, and we haven't even talked about Mason Gilts and guys like that that just, I mean, you just keep bringing out guys that hustle, that make plays. They're, when Jack Eady got on the floor against uh, uh, against Duke for a loose ball, you know you're doing something's going right. Talk of, you know, you watch coaches a long time, and and uh, Matt Painter's pretty special in terms of, and his staff pretty good at uh, putting the pieces together, especially when they have uh, pieces that all fit. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I just don't. A lot of it this year has to be. Uh, you got to give the coaches a ton of credit, but yeah. a lot of what it still takes time to put stuff together. And a lot of what we saw that was great last week, that's just the natural ability of of some of these new guys that can do some of the things they can do. Some of the guys we had before just just couldn't, you know, they just didn't see the the play happening ahead of time and those type of things. So um, it's it's just uh, it's all come together. The one thing that Matt does do, he, he recruits about the same kind of player that you're coming here to win. You're going to play team basketball. It's not going to be about you. If you want to come and be a part of a, a culture like that, then you're coming to the right place. I mean, he doesn't really cater and go after the one and done type guys like Ivy that often. I mean, if you get them, you have to take them. If they, if and you know, Ivy came and he played. He played hard every single game. You you have to make sure that the players that are coming in know what you expect. And this is the way it's going to be. And, and that's that's one thing he's done. And these guys, the, the new guys, and even the guys before, I mean, Gillis, Morton, those guys, um, they, they buy into it. They're setting great examples, I'm sure, every day in practice for the freshmen. And, um, you know, they it's got to be fun, I'm sure, even in practice right now. Because I, I, I haven't seen any practice this year, but I, I've heard that Smith, uh, when he was – the point guard on the second team, they were kicking the first team's butt in practice. So, yeah. you know, you learn about the competitiveness of guys uh, that way. You know, I'm sure Matt's made both these freshmen earn their job. He, he just didn't give it to them. No, yeah. um, I'm sure they earned it in practice. Uh, had, and they had to probably be head and shoulders above the other guy to, to get the job. But, you know, right now I, it looks like they're doing everything right and you just got to cross your fingers and hope they stay healthy all year. Yeah, no doubt. All right, two more questions for you. I'm going to let you get to the golf course. Okay, Jaden Ivey, you've obviously watched a lot of NBA and what it takes to play at that level. He's already shown that he can do that. Uh, uh, where do you see What do you see his ceiling or how good can he be in the league? Well, he can be real good. Now, I got to tell you the truth. I don't watch a ton of NBA yeah. anymore, and I haven't seen Detroit play much. But I, I do look at the box scores a lot, yeah. and I see what he's doing, um, you know, numbers-wise. But, you know, he, he's going to learn. Hopefully, you know, what's happening to him right now, I'm sure of it, because I, I coached a long time in there. This has to be tough because he's he's losing a lot. And for that's what happens a lot yeah. of times to the top picks. You're going to a bad team. You're, you're not going to turn, you know, you're not going to be able to turn a team around a real young team uh, overnight or whatever. So this is going to be a huge learning year for him on what he can do, what he can't do individually. But from here on, going the second and the third years, he's he's going to the team should be getting a little bit better, and he's going to fig, have to figure out you know how to how to win games and how to help his teammates win games. So this he's he's in, at the start of a long process to learn number one how to be a pro, 
what what he has to do better, what he has to work on. But then the next step is going to be, you know, you don't he I know he doesn't want to lose all the time like he's yeah. doing this year. So he's going to have to figure out how to be a leader and how to, you know, how to get guys to where they can win close games at the end. And he knows how to play at the end of games because we all know so many NBA games are decided in the last couple minutes. So um, he'll he'll do well. I mean, he's got he's probably the most talented athlete to ever play at Purdue. I think it's pretty safe to say Glenn Robinson, probably second, you know, you can go back and we've had a lot of good athletes there, but he was, um, he's pretty much head and shoulders uh, above almost all those guys. Gary Seasting third, by the way, absolutely <laughs> on that list. <laughs> so, but <laughs> Gary right. Seasting was a terrific player. I mean, if, again, if you haven't had a chance and, and a tough as nails, you may see this nice demeanor on this, on this interview, but he was his <laughs> Brian Walker and Derry seating in the backcourt uh, suffered a no fools. I, I can assure you. All right. One last question, Zach Eady at the next level. Uh, you know, he, he has made so much improvement uh, in my view. I mean, even though he was came in, he's been an amazing story, but even the little, the nuance of what he's doing now, is there room for him in that league? Can you find a, a, a I know he's seven, four and, and maybe not, and certainly not as mobile as others just because of that size, but do you see it is, do you see a window for him just in terms of a, a possibility in that? Yeah, I, I, I gotta be honest. I thought it was going to be tough last year and this summer. I didn't know, I, you know, it, the game is, it's so much faster, so much up and down, but he's going to, he's going to get drafted and he's going to, he's going to make a team and it, it's just going to be at that point, Number one, what team gets him? How do they play? How how are they, you know, it, it, he's going to have to learn a whole new kind of style of play. And, um, but, you know, so it's it's really kind of hard to predict. But back to his improvement, I mean, it's it's glaring, you know. I mean, number one, who, who nobody knew if he could play more than 20 minutes a game, yeah. right? Nice because he'd never done it before. And he's he doesn't seem to get that tired. He does, he's not getting in foul trouble as quickly as he did last year. I'm not I'm knocking on wood right now because yeah. <laughs> but he no, he's learned a lot of things. And even that that one play in the second half, I think it was somebody drove the to the basket. He goes straight up in the air. There was contact, right. but he went straight up and kept his arm straight up. That's what they teach you in the NBA because these guys are attacking the basket so hard and are so athletic that's what you have to do if you stay on the ground and even turn a little bit they're going to call a foul on you so that play he made right there that's an nba exactly what the nba coaches are going to be wanting him to do to protect the rim is just get there and go straight up and it's not a foul if you have as long as you don't bring your arms down so he's he's doing so many things better uh he's gonna he's gonna have a chance to be an nba player i'll just put it that way i it's hard to say how good he'll be or you know, how long it will take for him to be a regular player in the league. Uh, those are yet to be decided, but he's, he's on his way. He's improving a lot. He's got to stay one more year. Let me put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. But, but, but he, again, we can do things like that. that coaches can't, or can't, our, our little minds can go to next year. Everybody's back and you add in miles Colvin, if you can keep Zach, I mean, let's 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 keep it let's keep it to november 29th uh, 2022 it's probably a better yeah. way to deal with this and yeah. enjoy it while you can because nobody knows what tomorrow's going to bring you're right i said yeah, nobody no knows all right get out bring. there yeah no question get out there and uh shoot that uh 71 today would be a good that is not his age by the way we haven't divulged it yet but i will in the, in the other part but uh Jerry, happy birthday to you. Thanks so much for taking the time. I always enjoy it. We'll get you on our, our shows this, uh, uh, in, in, in get you steel and Satterfield together and you can talk all kinds of garbage about Peru basketball, but, uh, with those two guys, you can't put that on the air. Have a great rest. Of your day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, all have right. a great Thank rest you, of your Alan. birthday. And, uh, and, uh, I assume you got good weather down there for golf. Oh, perfect. Perfect. All right. Warmer than 50 degrees. It's not bad here in Lafayette today. So, all right. Hey, have a great day. Thanks so much. And uh, hit them straight, as they say. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Bye now.